Good morning, friends. I'm glad you're joining me today to hear another part of God's story. Before we look at our basket and open our Bibles, why don't you grab Legos or paper or your journal that you started last week to help you respond to God's story at the end. Whenever you're ready, please join me in singing our words from the book of Psalm to get our heart and our mind and our bodies ready to hear God's word. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Let's hear the word of the Lord together. So the first thing in my basket is my Bible. And we know that the Bible is God's word and it's full of stories about who God is how we can know and love and serve God, stories about God's people, and stories about Jesus. This week, our story comes from the book of Matthew, and Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. So as you can see, it's towards the end of the Bible. And Matthew is one of the four Gospels that tells us about the life and ministry of Jesus. So our story today is in Matthew chapter 3, and we're going to hear the story of these yellow words. Let's see what else is in our basket this morning. So the first thing I have today is the purple. And friends, we put the purple out when we are telling a story about Jesus because the purple is a fancy color and it reminds us that kings and queens might have worn purple at one time and that Jesus is an important person. And last week I used a new phrase. I said the purple helps us think about the mystery of Jesus. And we are wondering what that means. And as we're wondering about what the mystery of Jesus means, we are asking ourselves a question for the next couple months. We are asking, who is Jesus? And last week, as we heard the story of Jesus at the temple, we answered this question a little bit. So today, as we hear the words from our Bible and our story, I want you to see if you have another answer to who Jesus is. So our question is going to sit over here to help us remember, and we'll come back to, at, to it at the end. Our story today is a couple of years later. So Jesus has grown up, and we know at this time Jesus is probably around 30 years old. So quite a bit of time has passed since we saw him at the temple when he was 12. And our story today is going to take place near this water. And I can bet and almost hear some of my friends at home saying, Miss Ashley, it's a river. And that's right, today we're at the river. And we are at a river that's name is Jordan, the Jordan River. And our story also involves a man, and his name is John. And last we heard of John, let's see if John will stand up for us. Thank you, John. He was in his mom Elizabeth's belly. During Christmas time, we were, if you remember Mary's mom, excuse me, Jesus' mom, Mary, went and saw her cousin Elizabeth when they were both pregnant. And the baby Elizabeth had is John. And so John has grown up, and he has a very special job. In the Old Testament, we met some prophets, and their names were Malachi and Isaiah. And Malachi and Isaiah, they were prophets, and they told God, they told stories that God had given them to God's people, and they had an important message. They said, one day, I will send a messenger, these are words of God, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Another message they told God's people is that there will be a voice of one calling in the wilderness saying, prepare the way for the Lord make the straight paths for him so the so the prophets had these words and they told him that someone was coming and this person was John let me let's see what the Bible tells us it says in those days John the Baptist he came and he preached in the desert he said turn away from your sins because the kingdom of heaven is near so he told all the people that would listen to change their direction, stop sinning, because the kingdom of God is coming. 
And like, and like we just saw, John was doing what the prophets had told him. He was preparing a way. Now, John was an interesting man. He was an interesting man. So here's John telling this crowd of people the kingdom of heaven is coming. And I wonder, do you notice anything interesting about this picture? Look at how John is dressed compared to everybody else. The Bible tells us that John, John wore clothes made of camel's hair and he had a leather belt tied around his waist. And even more interesting, John ate special food. He ate locusts and honey. I don't know about you, that doesn't sound super yummy to me, but that is what John did. And so all these people came from around the area to the Jordan River to listen. And the Bible tells us every time he told them to turn around and repent, people listened to him. And John baptized them. He baptized them in the water. You see the one here? But there was another message that John was saying. He said, while I am baptizing you right now with water, someone else is coming later who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And this person, I am not even qualified to tie the sandals on his feet. Let's see what the Bible says. He told him, I baptize you with water. I'm calling you to turn away from your sins. But after me, one who is more powerful than I will come and baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. I wonder what all of these people were thinking when they heard John saying this. Someone else is coming to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So the Bible goes on and tells us that one day while John is baptizing people, Jesus travels from Galilee to the Jordan River. He comes to the river and he wants to be baptized by John. And I wonder, what do you think John said when Jesus asked him to baptize him? This picture helps us. No, the Bible tells us that John says, me? I can't baptize you. That's, it's not me. He tells him. He tells him. John tells Jesus, I need to be baptized by you. So why would you come to me? And listen to what the words of Jesus were. Jesus replied, let it be this way for now. It is right for us to do this. It carries out God's holy plan. And John agreed. So John baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. And the Bible tells us something amazing happened. The Bible tells us that immediately the heavens opened. It says the heavens opened and Jesus saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove. And it landed on him. The voice, a voice from heaven came. And it said these words. The voice said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. So Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River by John. And he received the gift of the Holy Spirit. I wonder what it would be like to hear the voice of God and seeing the heavens opened up. I wonder what John thought about this. I wonder if he understood. So last week I invited my friends to get a journal or some paper and to start answering this question with me. So let's find what I did today. This is my drawing for today. And I made some lines to look like the river. And the main words I wrote for myself today is, this is my son. That stood out to me. So I put it in big words and with yellow because I'm imagining it coming from heaven. So what did you learn today about who Jesus is? How are you going to answer this question today? So my answers today are that Jesus is God's son. And John says that Jesus is powerful. 
What did you learn to answer this question, who Jesus is? Maybe you want to write words like I did, or you're going to draw a picture to show it. And I wrote a few more wonder questions. I wonder how John knew who Jesus was when he came to the river. I wonder what it was like to hear the voice from heaven. And I wonder what it looks like when heaven is opened. So friends, I invite you to add to your journal today and draw your picture or write your words to answer the question who Jesus is. Because we're learning some good things about who he is and about the mystery of who Jesus is as we're heading towards Easter. Well, friends, that's where we're leaving Jesus today at the Jordan River. And I will see you next time. Love God with your whole heart this week. Bye, everybody.